You know, people say, well, I, I, I don't have time to train. Well, if you've got a little courage corner set up in your home, you can always start off half an hour earlier in the day. If you wake up at six, wake up at half past five and go do your training. If you leave your training to the end of the day, that's normally when things fall apart. Welcome to The Fortified Project. I'm Tom Ashfinter. Today my guest is Sean Cairns from South Africa. Sean is a master instructor uh, at Strong First. He travels the world and teaches kettlebell, barbell and bodyweight strength uh, courses to, for trainers to get qualified. Um, what else is there to know about Sean Cairns? Um, I've got a family. I've uh, got four kids, um, all train, uh, involved, in, involved in what we, what we do. Um, I even got my father training. He's in his 70s right. and he joins, joins me twice a week and, and trains awesome. uh, with kettlebells and uh, sometimes uses heavier weights than the young guys do. Uh, but he's been doing it for a while. Um, I've grown, grown up in South Africa, born there raised there. Uh, in South Africa we have sp different sport at school. One of them is rugby, uh, most, probably the most important. And at school we played rugby. Okay. Uh, so it was, you, know, you, you could only get out of playing rugby if you had a doctor's certificate. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you played. Which you didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. Even, if you, even if your mother sends you a note to say you can't play rugby, Nah. They tear it up and say, "Come, <laughs> play, play rugby." Uh, so, right. so that was so. Sport was an integral part of growing up in South Africa, okay. um, and that's where I started with just being physically active uh, and getting into getting into uh, into playing sport. And rugby was was that sport that I played. Okay. Um, so I then grew from there. I I really enjoyed swimming. Yep. So I got involved in swimming, uh, swam uh, at a uh, reasonably high level yep. uh, in, in South Africa. And uh, after, after the swimming, I uh, started getting into more of weight training. Okay. So barbell, dumbbell kind of work. And this was back in the, the, la the late 80s. Uh, and uh, when I went to university, I really got into the, the weight training side of things. At that stage, I, I, I stopped playing with the, uh, rugby, yep. um, taking a bit of a break, right. and started really training with, with the weights. Okay. And in my final year of university, I actually entered a bodybuilding competition. So it's one of the things okay. that few people know about me. Do, do you have any pictures of that? Uh, <laughs> can, can we share those pictures? <laughs> uh, we'll see. I will, I'll, I'll All see. Right, well, it was it was a novice competition. Right. Um, it was it was fun to 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 do, and it's like a lot of things you you don't know if you like it unless you yep. try it. Yep. Uh, I enjoyed the experience for what it was. Yep. Um, not so much that I'd do it again. Sure. Uh, it it it's it's quite quite hard on the body. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I came fourth in the men's open novice uh, side of it and had a lot of fun and then after then after university I carried on I carried on with the the weight training and started work uh, but what I missed and I think a lot of guys miss this is that camaraderie yep. of sport mm. and that 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 community okay. of, of being together uh, and doing something together Cool. Uh, with a common purpose. So I got back into rugby okay. and started playing some uh, club rugby up in uh, Johannesburg yep. and really enjoyed that and still, still continued with my, my weight training um, until I had a motorbike accident in 97. We, with, with the rugby breaking my leg, um, we started building a, building a home gym 
Uh, it became quite important because with the first uh, child born at the end of 97, we didn't have much time. Yep. You know, the time it took to get to the gym and back, you could get a whole training session done at home. So between that time and early 2003, we had four kids and we built up a home gym so that my wife and I could continue training and continue with our, with, with our strength training before the kids woke up. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so it, it just gave us a little bit of time to re-energize. And, but, you know, I'd been doing barbell work for a long time and I was looking for something different. Yep. Uh, when, you, when you're young with playing sport, especially a contact sport like rugby, you end up doing things to your body that you only pay for later on. And now, you know, getting into my uh, early 30s, I was starting to pay for some of those things that, yep. I, that I'd done. And I was needing something different. Okay. And I oh, found what was this, that? Well, I found this little... I didn't know that this was it. Yep. I just read this, this little, little article in the, in the Men's Health uh, in South Africa that... Uh, said about kettlebells. So there's a number, I, I ordered myself a set of kettlebells, uh, eight, 12 and a 16, and then I ordered a 24 and a 32, and I ordered this Russian guy's book and video, not even a DVD, a VHS video. <laughs> right. Okay, so this is like, like yep. way back. And, and this, this guy is Pavel Satsulin. I didn't know how this was going to change my view of training. Um, at that stage, I was a professional. I was an entrepreneur. I had, a, I had my own company. Uh, I had two companies at the time, uh, doing, doing very well in, in risk management, uh, in, credit card, in credit card distribution. Uh, we had uh, distrib another distribution contract. Uh, with uh, uh, tele tele uh, telephone services in South Africa. So we were doing well. And this was just adding on. And I started with these kettlebells. And you know, we'd watch the video, and Pavel would do some swings. I'd get the kettlebell, and I'd do some swings, and I'd ask my wife, how does that look? And she goes, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but for a year, I played with those. Okay. And a friend of mine who was a former Springbok rugby player, he was injured, uh, Janis Labaskachny. He was, he was injured and I said to him, hey, you need to do kettlebells. And he's a little taller than me. And he goes, yeah, you need to know more about kettlebells. Okay, so that's how, that's how you got into that's how the got professional to... side of coaching. Exactly, right. that's, that's right. when I thought, okay, so let me find out a little bit more. So I went onto the internet and I found this, found this chap called Mark Marler. And I, and I sent him a message. I said, where do I learn? And he went, you go get onto Pavel's course, uh, which was the RKC at the time. Yep. And back, this is back now, 2004. So I, I booked on this course. I went, I went upstairs and I said to my wife, I'm going to America to do this course. And she's not going without me. Right. She, wants, <laughs> she wanted to go, but she didn't want to do it. Okay. She wanted to go. So we went, we went over and I did this, this course. First day I thought, I, I got back to the hotel. I said to my wife, that's it. We have wasted all our money coming here. I'm never going to pass this course. I was sore. My hands could hardly close. I was tired. All I wanted to do was get some food and go to sleep. Sean, I can totally relate to this. That was my first day in uh, Seoul, South Korea, yeah. when I did mine in 2011, so many, many years after you did yours. After the first day, I said, well, I don't know how I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. How I'm gonna pass this, I have no idea. Got very little skin left on my hands. <laughs> and Saturday morning, I got up and I don't think I had any muscle in my lower body that wasn't sore. Mm -hmm. um, Yep. How did you well, feel? How did you feel off the end of the second day, though? Uh, much better. Exactly. Much better. Exactly. So, 
I also I got, I got up, and the only reason I went, went back was because I had traveled that far to be there, yep. and I don't quit. Uh, I went back and did the second day, but by the end of the second day, I was feeling so much better. Look, I was still tired, but I was, I was feeling I better. see the end of it now. Yeah. Um, by the end of the third day, I passed. But what I, what I understood was that for a year of doing kettlebells, reading the book and watching the video, my wife lied to me for that whole year because I looked nothing like Pavel. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't do it the same. Yep. And I realized that in the first hour of the course that I didn't, I, I had been playing with these, yep. but not really understanding what they're there for and how to do, how to do the exercise properly. And that was, could I say, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too dramatic to say it was life changing mm -hmm. in terms of, it changed the way I viewed training, uh, the, the, what I learned at, on that weekend, and it actually changed the direction I wanted to take my life in, okay. in terms of that was the start of when I became a more uh, a professional uh, in, instructor, professional coach. So when I got back after that weekend, I realized I'm, I'm not a coach yet. I just know a few things yep. and a little bit more than other people know. Yep. So for about three, four months, I just trained family and friends for nothing. Because you know, if you pay nothing, you can't expect anything. So for, I trained family and friends until I felt confident that I could teach what I had learned and I could pass on what I had learned. And that's when we started with our, our business uh, Kettlebells for Africa yep. uh, in South, in, in that, that stage was in Johannesburg and started teaching people how to train with kettlebells okay. and that's, that was the start of my professional tra coaching uh, career. I, and I know this story because we've known each other for about seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you were the, the first of something that um, is kettlebell related. What, what is it? What is it called and what is it about? Oh, so up to 2004, the heaviest bell was, a, I think it was a 32. And then they brought in a 40 kilo bell and that was called uh, the Bulldog. Yep. Um, and then they brought in this 48 kilo bell. They launched the 48 kilo bell. I think it was August or so of 2004. That's, that's uh, a small person. That, that, that <laughs> condensed into a that's, that's a... that's a nice young lady. Yep. Right, right there, 48 kilos. So what did you have to do with that? Uh, well, so they launched, they launched this in August. Yep. And in the launch, they said, they've got this thing called the Beast Tamer Challenge. And if you could press it with one arm, you can pistol squat it. Pistol squat means a one leg squat. Yes. Uh, and you can do a tactical pull up, which means uh, overhand grip, uh, pull from dead hang yes. to uh, bar against your neck. Chin, so chin over the bar. With, with this. With this. Hanging on you. Hang, on hanging chain. down yep. on a chain. If you can do all three of those, you become the beast tamer. And this is exactly four weeks, it was a Sunday, four weeks before we were leaving. So, oh, after 2003, I realized if I wanted to be good at this, I better train with the best people. And I said, I will go back to the US and train with Pavel every year. 2004, my wife, she said she wanted to go and do her certification. And I volunteered to be an assistant. Okay. So, I w so I, we were both going over in 2004. It was the beginning of October of 2004. We were going over. She was going to do her certification. I was going to be the, an assistant on the certification. And I saw this and I needed something to train for. So I said to her, this is what I'm going to do. But I had a problem. The heaviest bell I had was a 32 kilo. Right. 
and I couldn't do one pistol squat yet. Okay, how did you overcome this small problem? Well, I put together a plan. Yep. Uh, so the plan was, I was going, so pistol squat, it's not the best way to learn how to pistol squat, but I had a, uh, a Smith machine. So a Smith machine, the bar, set bar in a, a what are the slides on slides, the frame. slides, yeah, yeah yep. on a frame. And I just, I started at the highest level and I took my 32 because I said, well, there's no point in learning to do a pistol squat with a 16 if you go do it with a 48. So I started at the highest level and I just did what Pavel calls grease the groove, yep. which is just doing a lot of reps when you're fresh. So do a few, come back an hour later or so, do a few more. Never overtrain, never push to failure. Never push to failure. Yep. Just, it's got to feel yep. easy all the time. And I did a whole lot of those. And slowly, over the four weeks, I lowered that, yep. that bar until I was able to do five uh, at, the lowest, at the lowest setting. Okay. Just touch and come up. So that was, that was the, the one. The, the other was I needed to press. So I had a 32, that's not heavy enough. So I loaded a barbell and I did, I did a side press with a barbell and I went up to 65 kilos side press. Right. Um, and being on a, on a bar, you've got to control that rotation as well. Yep. So it really got the shoulders really nice and strong. For the pull-up, I did pull-ups Grease the groove style, yep. pull-ups under a swinging bar. So I'd have two 16 kilos yep. under the bar. Yep. I'd slide them onto my feet, pull up, go down, drop one, pull up, go down, drop the other, pull up and down. And again, the idea is that you never push the body to the point where you make the mistakes, you lose the form and you injure yourself. A absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, but I also needed some real low down strength. So I added in some deadlifts. Of course. <laughs> uh, just, just to get full body strength. It was probably 12 weeks of training condensed into four weeks. Right. Uh, and I did visit the physiotherapist uh, probably three times during that period just to open up the shoulders a little bit. Sure. Uh, you know, um, so I wouldn't recommend that four week condensed yep. for, for, for most people out there, but it worked for me. Did you pass? Well, when, when, you, do, when you do these, these courses as an assistant, you've got to do setup the night before. So we all got there on the Thursday, the course started on the Friday, we all got there on the Thursday and we were unpacking. And it was the very first time most of us had ever seen a 48 kilo bell. And we're like, wow, let's try this. So. I pressed it and I did a pull-up, just messing around, but I hadn't done a pistol squat because the, the first full pistol squat I'd done was on the Sunday before. Sunday night we left. Right. So I did a full pistol squat, that was it. My very second pistol squat was on the Friday when we actually had the competition. And I was out of the three, uh, there was uh, Brett Jones, Thomas Phillips and myself. So Brett Jones was the team leader, or was the senior instructor yep. that Thomas and Phillips and myself were assistants to. And we were the only three. So we were the best, we were the best team, of course. Because we, we were the only team of instructors that actually went up to, to do this Beast Tamer Challenge. Uh, Thomas and Brett missed one of them, and I managed to get all three of them on that day. So I have the the privilege or the honor of being the original the beast original tamer. Beast tamer. Uh, so up to this day, I, I'm still the heaviest beast tamer. I did it at 116 kilos of body weight. Um, not the tallest uh, anymore, but uh, still, the, still the heaviest. Right. And that was at the age of 35 okay. uh, With, that I did. Um, it's an amazing story, Sean. Like it's, I think what the takeaway, the message from this is uh, consistency yeah. will beat odds. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you had a plan. Uh, you went out every morning and put the effort in and uh, executed the plan, right? And the, uh, uh, to success. Yeah, and, and don't let obstacles stand in your way. 
So Sean, as um, I'm also a professional uh, trainer, mm. and um, what I often hear from people is that, yeah, I, I tried to do what you told me to do, uh, do that five or 10 minute little program you gave me, I just didn't have the time, or kids got sick, or my wife needed me, um, I had to go to the shop, uh, look after my business. So were your circumstances always perfect when you wanted to train, or were, were there any obstacles? And, and uh, so how did you go about those sort of problems? Well, training for the Beast Tamer Challenge, uh, I had obstacles. My very first obstacle was I didn't have a 48. I had a 32. That's a big obstacle. That's a big obstacle. I, I, you know, until you actually feel it in your hand, uh, the, the type of pressure, if you've never felt a kettlebell, a light kettlebell will give you a certain amount of pressure pulling your wrist over. But a heavy kettlebell is really going to pull because the angle is much greater uh, between the handle and the bell itself. And so you've got this torque pulling you this way, and which you have to control. So it was a, it was a big obstacle. That, plus the fact that we had four kids, four kids at home, uh, I was just winding down two businesses at the time. So it was a very stressful time of my life. Uh, very successful businesses that uh, our, our contracts had been canceled. And um, we, had to, we had to find different ways of, of earning money and you know, so there was, a, there was a lot of stress mm. and I needed to focus right. on, on this and I made the time. So having the, the gym at home made it easy. You know, people say, well, I, I, I don't have time to train. Well, if you've got a little courage corner set up in your home, you can always start off half an hour earlier in the day. If you wake up at six, wake up at half past five and go do your training. If you leave your training to the end of the day, that's normally when things fall apart. Because when you go to work, you plan to leave at five, uh, five to happening. five, yep. crisis hits, you're there till seven. Yep. By the time you get home, you're stressed, you don't really want to train, it's getting late, yep. kids, resp other responsibilities, and you, it's just easy to let that go. So the, the one thing that I, I, I learned is don't let those obstacles stand in your way. Uh, decide what you want to do and then work towards that goal and make the most of what you've, what you've got. Have you always felt that the reward at the end was worth the effort? Yes. Uh, you know, I wanted to do that Beast Tamer Challenge. It's something that stuck with me for, for a while. I, I'm still considered an original Beast Tamer, yep. but that was just one aspect. It's, very sp it's a very special goal. Very special, specialized goal. Uh, but I, th I think in, in, in your health, in your fitness, in your strength training life, you need to have little goals sure. along the way. And that was my goal at that time. And then, then my goal was to become the best instructor and the best coach that I could be. Uh, but to be a good coach, you need to internalize what you do so that you, could be, you can teach it and you can, you can help other people. And so I, those, were the, those were those goals and it was worth it. I, I can see it in my children. You know, they're now the youngest is 16. Um, and they, they all train to a certain, to a certain degree. They, they all come into the gym and, and, and do some training. What role did you play in that, Sean? Did they see you train and they became interested or was there any other impact on them? I think, I think it's really just the role model yep. of they see that their, their parents get up in the morning and not only teach other people how to move well and how to be strong, but practice it as well. And I didn't, you know, I didn't have to teach them the, the technical side of doing a swing or the technicalities of doing a get up. They, after years of just watching us, they were able to get in and, and do yep. the, uh, the, 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 the stuff. Right. And, and, and people always ask, 
what age? What, what age should, you know, do we let, the child, let our children? So when they're interested, and that can be That's a good point. five years old, yeah. but don't make it a chore. Right. Don't make it an effort. Yeah. They must just, it must be fun. Yeah. So they would come in and they'd just be there with us, whether they're picking up a kettlebell and putting it over there, yeah. or actually doing a swing with it, whatever. But they'd in, they were in there with us and they grew up with that. And I think it just, it just rubbed off on them. Um, so yeah, they, 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 they accomplished many things in sport, my kids. Yep. Um, um, my, my son has uh, just been selected for the South African schools uh, under 18, uh, SA schools A team okay. uh, for rugby. Um, so my, my younger son played uh, provincial water polo my, uh, my daughters all play, both played water polo. My uh, second eldest, my youngest daughter, she played provincial water polo as well. Right. So yeah, they, they all have d played at different levels uh, yep. in sport, whether it's at school, provincial, or representing their country. And the strength training that we've shown them has really helped. Uh, Discipline and prepare the body, mind, Mm -hmm. All of it. Well, I think you, you struck on two things there that are yeah. really important. Important the discipline of training, and, and discipline is about it's it's, it's about consistency. Yeah. yeah, it's it's about you know, do a little bit every day, and it adds up. It's like savings. You 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 can't you can't save by only putting money away once. Right. Yeah, but if you put a little bit away every day. At the end of the year, you got you got quite a quite a saving. True. Uh, so every you know the training is just you do a little bit every day, consistently. At the end of the year, you're going to be so much better. But he has he has the trick, is if you cons if if you consistently training, but you're going at the wrong pace. You're you're flirting with danger. When somebody trains and then gets injured, they go all the way back to the beginning, even maybe before that. So you've got to make sure that the training is intelligent and structured. Yes. And do you think in this day and age with social media and YouTube and uh, whatnot, um, a lot of guys just decide to, to look up information? So let's say I'm a 40 plus guy. I, I haven't had a chance or I chose not to um, do any training in the past 20 years and now all of a sudden I'm interested, I want to do something about my physique, the way I feel, want to have more energy. So I get on the computer, Google six week workouts or watch someone on the YouTube doing handstand push ups. So uh, how can I avoid uh, making those mistakes and choosing the wrong type of training for my condition at the moment. Uh, so the curriculum on the University of YouTube has got better over time. Mm. Uh, but just like selecting the right author, you need to select the right coach. And because there's so many people who are posting stuff there that doesn't really help. So You've got to, you, if you're going to go that route, find people that are well respected in the industry and follow their, their particular training programs. The, that is the lowest level. What I would suggest is go see somebody. You know, I, I tell you what. I've watched many dance programs. There's dance competitions, like, so you think you can dance and Dancing right. with the Stars and that. I've watched so many of those. They've, they're a lot of fun. I'm not a dancer. Just because I've watched, and I've tried some of those moves <laughs> in the privacy of my home. I've I'm tried. I'm just picturing, <laughs> picturing that now. <laughs> I've tried, but it, I'm not a dancer. Yep. If I wanted to be a dancer, I would go to a, a, a dance instructor because a professional can say, 
Move your foot just a little bit wider. Okay, try that now. You go, that's amazing. Whole, whole different move. Yep. I feel so much better. Uh, you can't get that watching a video. Sure. So, you know, if, if, you've, if, if you're stuck and you don't have if anybody, hey, it's a good place to start. Do your homework on, on, on the, the coach. Make sure that the person that you, you videos you're watching is actually good at what they do. All right? Great. But if you have a chance, go see a qualified instructor. And that's a qualified instructor in whatever you're, what you're wanting to do. Yep. Uh, whatever modality of training you want to do, go see a qualified instructor. You, you're not going to learn how to dance unless you go to a dance instructor. You're not going to learn how to lift weights properly unless you go to a strength coach. What would the good coach, the one you are talking about, um, how do you recognize that, that the good coach, what would they do first when I walk in and they look at me, they go, okay, now your arms are too small. You need to do bicep curls. Go get that barbell, right? Or get those dumbbells. What makes a coach a good coach? Well, first of all, you need to look at what are they qualified in? So if I was looking for a coach, a kettlebell coach, I'd want to see something like the SFG, Strong First Jerevoy uh, certification, because then I know that he has trained to a certain standard and it's not given away. It, there is a minimum standard that, they, that you have to meet to pass. You know, I spoke about passing earlier when I did my certification. It's not given to you. You know, 2011, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't just Turn pitch up, up and, and paid pay and, and, walked. <laughs> and, and walk out with a certificate. You have to earn that certificate. So, we, so I know if you're going to go to a strong first kettlebell instructor, they have a certain level standard that they had to meet themselves and the ability to be able to communicate. So that's, that's the, the first thing. When you walk in, uh, so in any modality, look, f try to make sure that the coach is actually qualified in teaching that modality. Just because he's a personal trainer does not mean that he, he is qualified to teach kettlebells. Does not mean that he's, qua he's a qualified gymnast. If you want to do gymnastics, you go to a gymnastics coach. Yep. You, don't go, you, d you don't find a general personal trainer yep. okay so that's your first when when you get there hey we were all Ferraris in our day uh, we moved well when we were young uh, then we parked the Ferrari in the garage for 20 years you are not going to take your Ferrari out and 180 kilometers an hour down the, down the drag unless you first check the tires Check the, make sure that the bearings are okay. Make sure there's oil. Fill up with fuel. Make sure your brakes are working because you know when you go to 180, you need to stop as well. That's right. Yeah, so there's, and the same thing. We were once Ferraris. We parked our Ferraris for 20 years. Now we're getting in, now we're in our 40s and we think we need to do something about this. Mm. Well, the first thing we've got to do is, are there any flat tires? That means, do we have mobility issues? Yep. So your, do we have uh, ankles that actually move? Yeah. Hips, hips that actually move? Do we, do we have mobility? Do we, can we maintain stability as well? So we want mobility, we also want stability. Uh, we, we, want to, we want to check all of those, those, those types of things. Yep. And a good coach will first check that. And will first check, can you move? How do you move before we start loading? So get you to move better, and once you're move, moving better, we'll get you to move stronger. Right. So simple before complex, light before heavy, it, 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 skill it. before load. Before load, yep. yeah. Um, and a lot of people confuse progression with load. A, if you look at, let's just take a ballerina, a five-year-old, Dancing, looks good, hmm. does a pirouette, 
but it's not the same as a 23-year-old professional ballet dancer doing a pirouette. They're doing the same movement. Different skill level. Different skill level. Yep. So the progression is not just in load, but it's actually in movement skill. So we, we, we sometimes, this industry is so set on intensity and load and how much can you lift? How much can you bench? How fast? How, how fast can you run? Yep. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's how well. It's, yeah. Let's think of how well can you do that. And for how long? Longevity or sustainability of it as well. Because you do it too soon, too fast, you might increase your fitness really quickly mm. in four, six weeks. But then what happens with the injury? When the injury comes, you go, like you said before, you go all the way back. You go back. Yep. So a good, a, a good thing is on, on that is people ask about kids. We spoke about kids. Yep. Uh, so one of, the, one of the problems with training kids, especially teenagers, you know, as they're starting to grow, is that their connective tissue is under a lot of strain. We, as humans, our muscles adapt quicker to load than our connective tissue does and our bone structure does. So our muscles can get stronger quicker so just for guys who are not sure what the connective tissue is about, it's, it's around the joints. Yeah, your, your, your tendons and your tendons ligaments. And ligaments yes. Okay, uh, so maybe there's a lot of people out there who say, how oh, my, my bicep, my, my, my elbows are really, I, I feel just achy yep. in, my, in my joints. It's very common. Yeah, very common. Achy in my shoulders, my, my hips, it's, there's, a, there's a deep ache. Yep. That is where your connective tissue is being overstressed. So people don't, people don't tear biceps in the middle. Yep. They, they tear it original insertion. Yes. All right? That's connective tissue. So when we train, we need to allow time for the connective tissue to catch up in strength, especially kids, because their connective tissue is under a lot of, under a lot of pressure as they grow. And the older guys. <laughs> and, 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 and the older guys. So, he has a thing with the, with the older guys. When, when I was 19, 20 years old, I was benching 180 kilograms. I can't bench that now. It's close, but it's, I'm not benching that now. I, if, if I tried and pushed hard, to do that too quickly, I'm going to hurt myself. So a lot of guys, they come, they, they, 20 years they've parked their Ferrari in the garage and they think they can do 300 kilometers per hour and they take it out again. Well, no, you can't. Not even someone like you who has never stopped yeah. training. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've been forced to stop because I've, I, yeah, I'm human. Yep. I, 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 I fail every now and again and I, yep. and I break yep. and I do some stupid things yep. and, and, and only afterwards I realize they were stupid. But yeah, that, that's, that's being human. Uh, but yes, so don't, when, you, when you're coming back into training, don't think of what you used to do. That's what you used to do. It's in the past. It's in the past. Yep. If you keep comparing yourself to that, you're going to feel like a failure you're going to feel you're never, you're never measuring up to where you want to be. Rather, understand where you are now and grow from there. But it's getting back to that longevity. And the longevity is very, it's very critical that we have longevity of our joints and our connective tissue. Otherwise, we can look good but ache inside. And that's not longevity. Eventually, you're going to stop. Eventually, something's going to break. This is pure gold, Sean. A few sentences. Uh, Sean, uh, would you be able to uh, teach me and, and Barney, show us a couple of movements that you think someone over 40 can get into, mm -hmm. would benefit from tremendously? Well, and, and could do anywhere, actually, even at home, without going to the gym? Sure. So I'm going to take you through two movements. Uh, the one is the plank. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through a plank more 
there are two types of planks. It's like there's, there's, there's two types of running. You can either run a marathon or you can, you can sprint 100 meters. Uh, they're both useful, but for different reasons. Uh, you can either plank for time or you can plank for tension. And strength. Which is, yeah, to build tension, build, build strength, and build connectivity through your body. You want to be able to connect your feet with your shoulders and all the way through. So you want to connect your left hip and your right shoulder, your right hip and your left shoulder, back front, right, right hip to right shoulder down the side. Uh, you want to connect everything together and, and create... Why is that important? Well, that, that gives you stability mm -hmm. uh, and uh, create, uh, enables you to move much stronger. Right. So, uh, and, and move as a unit not as a whole of individual pieces. And that's why, why I would recommend for guys over 40, do complex movements. Do movements that full body. Do you have one of those as well? I've got one of those. So the first thing is we're going to look at the plank and we're going to see how we can improve the plank. Okay. Make, make the plank a little stronger and get people to understand how to move better and, and create, create a, a more solid foundation in the plank. The second one is the get up. So we're going to do unweighted okay. get ups and I will, I'll show you how to progress from just the movement patterns to connecting those movement patterns better to having something external to uh, focus you and then how we can actually in, in the end load that movement pattern. But why the get up? Well it covers almost every movement pattern that our bodies have. Push and a pull, squat and a hinge, a lunge, a rotation. A all in one. Yeah, your like a Swiss Army knife. E exactly, it's, right. it's, it's all there, okay. all, all together. So learning how to connect everything together. And we only load once, once we're moving well. So those are, the, those are the two things we're going to look at. Sounds good, Sean. Guys, stay with us. We'll be back soon.